Good evening and welcome to our lecture on passive transport, a means of molecular movement. Uh, we'll cover the basics of what passive transport is, um, as well as talk about some major examples of this uh, type of molecular movement. All right, we'll begin with defining it. Passive transport is a movement of a substance of some kind from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Uh, that's often termed down its concentration gradient. Um, to move from an area of high concentration to low concentration, uh, the cell has to expend absolutely no energy in the form of ATP. Um, this is something that happens naturally. Now why it does not have to expend energy is because of something called kinetic energy or energy of motion. Uh, all molecules, all ions of any kind are in constant motion and because they're in constant motion they're going to run around and basically bump into each other all the time and knock each other around until they spread out equally or reach a state of equilibrium so anything um, will typically diffuse for example a person blows out a puff of smoke in a room and eventually the people in the back of the room can smell the smoke from the cigarette that's because the molecules were initially dispersed right in front of the person's face in a nice little tight ball of smoke and as the molecules of air zipped around and slammed into the smoke molecules knocking them all around they diffused or spread out in the room until uh, everyone in the room could smell uh, the cigarette smoke our types of passive transport include four diffusion osmosis facilitated diffusion or carrier mediated diffusion and filtration uh, diffusion is simply the movement of a substance from high to low. Uh, substances like glucose, CO2, oxygen, uh, some kind of substance other than water. If it is water that is moving from high to low, it is termed osmosis. Now if these molecules such as, uh, let's say a hydrogen ion, is diffusing from high to low, it has to go through a carrier protein in the cell membrane. It has to go through a doorway. Uh, molecules that are polar, or water loving and molecules that have charges uh, often have to move through carrier proteins and this is termed facilitated diffusion because you facilitate their entry it is still a movement from high to low but you're using a doorway some assistance there um, filtration is based off hydrostatic pressure and hydrostatic pressure is simply a uh, pressure like in a water hose the water is flowing through the hose and you poke a hole in it and the water comes squirting out of the hole. That's because there's more pressure in the water hose than there is in the atmosphere. So the, the substances inside the hose move from high pressure to low pressure. Uh, in your capillaries this occurs. Uh, famously filtration is happening inside your kidneys right now as we speak. I'll give you an example of that later. But basically filtration is the movement of both water and solutes. Uh, through pores from areas of high to low pressure based off hydrostatic pressure. Quick example here of diffusion. You can see our molecules of dye on one side of our membrane, nice and you know collected over here in high concentration. Now as the water moves around and slams these things around, they're going to knock uh, the dye molecules around and eventually spread out to equal concentration. And you could picture uh, yourself dropping some colored dye into water letting it set for a while coming back and the water would be the color of the dye as it spreads all the way around. A, quick, um, a few uh, quick examples of diffusion in the body would be like oxygen diffusing from high um, inside your lungs to low inside your bloodstream and CO2 diffusing from high in the bloodstream to low in the lungs. So the process of breathing in and breathing out is all controlled by diffusion. Um, a lot of diffusion occurs in your digestive system when substances you've eaten move from high to low uh, out of your digestive system and into your blood. Here is our example of diffusion of our respiratory gases. You can see oxygen moving from high in the lungs to low in the blood, CO2 from high in the blood's plasma to low in the lungs where you're going to breathe it out. Here you see uh, carbon dioxide diffusing from high in the tissue cells. This is because of cell respiration produces the CO2, specifically in the Krebs cycle. And the cells build up CO2, moves from high to low in the blood. Now the cells consume oxygen during cell respiration, and so oxygen diffuses from the blood to the cells. 
This would be what's happening down in the muscles of your legs. And this would be where you're exchanging in your lungs to help reload this blood with the oxygen you lost down here in, in your legs. So move on to our next slide. Osmosis, once again, the diffusion of water. Um, hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic are terms that refer to a solution. Hypotonic solutions are very dilute. They have few solutes, mostly water. Isotonic solutions have equal concentrations of whatever the substances have in them, like the cell has, and hypertonic are very solute concentrated or salty. So, for example, if this cell was 80% water, a hypotonic solution would be, say, 100% water, pure water. So the high water concentration is outside the cell, the low is inside the cell, so water flows in and the cell swells up and bursts. If you're a plant cell, you have a cell wall, as you can see there, um, and these do not swell up and burst because of the cell wall. Isotonic solutions are equal, so if the cell is 80%, the solution is 80%, so there's no net movement. If molecules move in, then molecules move out. This is the situation your body wants to stay in as isotonic. Uh, eye drops you put in your eyes are isotonic because uh, you don't want to swell up the cells of your eyes or shrink them down either one. Hypertonic solutions are very kind of solute concentrated or salty. Uh, so let's pretend the cell here is 80% water and the solution is say 50% water. That means our high water is inside the cell so water moves from high inside to low outside and the cell shrinks down or shrivels up and this would be what would occur during dehydration. The uh, same thing occurs in plants just keep in mind the cell wall stays pretty rigid. Our next side is facilitated diffusion and facilitated diffusion is still the movement from high to low as you can see here by our example there's more of these little say glucose molecules on the outside than the inside so it is high to low down the concentration gradient but they're using a a specific doorway a carrier protein here a transport protein to move them across, so facilitating. Polar molecules like uh, glucoses and ions that have charges that say hydrogen ions or sodium or potassium um, have a hard time crossing membranes. So this little red dot here, pretend it can't get through the membrane, so it has to use a doorway. Whereas a nonpolar substance like a lipid soluble substance that's nonpolar like CO2 could just diffuse right through, uh, no problem. Um, so facilitated keyword there, right, moves right through the, the transport protein. Um, an example of filtration in the body comes from the kidneys. We call it bulk flow because both water and solutes are moving through these pores. So in here you've got a nephron, this is the functional unit of a kidney, and there's this little ball of capillaries inside this Bowman's capsule called a glomerulus. So picture taking a water hose coming in and then folding it all up in a bunch of creases and then the water hose comes out. You create high pressure in these areas that are folded. And so small solutes, things that can leak through the pores of the capillaries, just leak out into this proximal tubule here. Um, that's a lot of things. Water leaks out, salts, bicarbonate, hydrogen ions, urea. Lots of small things, drugs, poisons famously leak out here. Uh, larger things like the red blood cells, the white blood cells, uh, albumin, uh, common plasma protein, they're too large to go through the pore, so they stay inside the blood. Uh, so this is like filtering, uh, say your water, you know, using your pure water filter, it goes through a series of filters and, and breaks it down that way. So this would be pressure in a water hose uh, leaking out, say, into this proximal tubule. And you can look at this chart the rest of the way, you know, and learn about here's some passive transport here active transport we talked about on a different set of slides so um, those are all the reviews of passive transport high to low no energy required due to kinetic energy diffusion osmosis uh, facilitated diffusion and filtration all examples